what's up guys stark arm duels and today i'm back here with tyler and tyler what are you going to be profiling we got a metaphys nordic today and i'm really excited to see this one. this deck you've been working on for a while now so guys don't forget to like comment subscribe definitely hit that bell nursing come our notification squad and check out the patreon down in the description down below and we're gonna get straight on into this so let's see what you're playing dude all right well first of all i do have a couple shout outs mm -hmm. i want to shout out obviously you Dark Arm Duels for uh, supplying me with this deck for my birthday, actually. Oh, yeah, dude. I really appreciate it. I've loved this deck ever since it was released, and I just never got around to buying it. And I was like, hey, uh, that'd be a pretty good deck for the birthday. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'm glad that you're able to profile it on the channel, too, dude. That's really cool. Yeah, Especially the birthday deck, dude. So let's go ahead and get straight on into it. All right. So we're starting out with the three Metaphys Ragnarok. He's pretty much your uh, staple of the deck. He allows you to, on normal or special summon, banish the top three of your deck. Mm -hmm. And he gains 300 attack for each Metaphys card banished by this effect. And that's permanent. And when he inflicts battle damage to the opponent, he lets you summon a Metaphys monster from the deck. And also he's a tuner, so it also comes up for synchro play. This is really nice. And then I play three copies of Metaphys Nephitis. It's pretty much your searcher of the deck. So all the, most of the Metaphys have a gimmick where on standby phase of the next turn they're banished, they shuffle the deck for costs, by the way, to do something. This one allows you to add a Metaphys card from deck to hand, and this is not once per turn, so if you banish three copies, you can get three searches. That's so good. And then he has a uh, effect when he's summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster, he banishes all the set spell traps. So it's really good when you go against a set five pass deck. Yeah, it's kind of like the old school Neftis monster where it deal, deals with back row. Yeah, yeah. They kind of like interact with how the original counterparts are. And then I'm playing three of the Metaphys Daedalus. He has the same effect as uh, Neftis, but instead of banishing set back row, he banishes uh, special summon monsters. Mm -hmm. So you could summon it off the Ragnarok and just wipe the board. It's pretty nice. And then uh, it's uh, he has a second effect where he shuffles the deck for cost on the next standby phase when he's banished to banish a different named Metaphys card from deck. So you can banish the Nephthys for the next turn. You can banish Ragnarok to set up plays for your, uh, your continuous trap in the deck. Mm -hmm. And you can... Uh... Oh, I never lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, you can uh, banish uh, the uh, trap card from deck. Mm -hmm. The Ascension to get a search. That's pretty good, dude. Alrighty, and one of I play is only one Tyrant Dragon. You feel like one Tyrant Dragon's fine? Yeah, sometimes I want to, but it doesn't really come up. It always puts itself back in deck with its standby phase effect. Basically what it does is it, you shuffle it back to the deck, and it lets you hand special a uh, Metaphys monster. Mm -hmm. And then when it's summoned by a Metaphys monster, he's unaffected by traps, and he can attack twice. He's pretty much your game closed. You go Ragnarok, attack, summon this, attack, attack. It's typically game, it depends. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good lineup, though. And then the last of the Metaphys monsters, I play two Decoy Dragon. Decoy Dragon's so good in this deck. So, like, this is a card that no one ever reads. He basically, his pendulum effect and his monster effect is pretty much the same. It allows you to, when your monster's declared for an attack, he targets a Metaphys monster. I believe the pendulum effect is only banished, and Graveyard is banished and or Graveyard. You target one of them and summon it and banish him. So you could summon the Ragnarok and trigger it to banish three. You could summon Daedalus and trigger it to banish all the monsters or Nephthys for the back row. Mm -hmm. And then on the next standby phase when he's banished, he comes back. He just keeps coming back. That's so good because that's an every turn thing. Oh, yeah. If you keep banishing it, he'll keep coming back. And that's it for the Metaphys main deck monsters. If I can grab them. And then since I'm playing Nordic monsters, I'm playing a Nordic engine. I'm playing two Vandus. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much just your level 4 tuner. It has an effect to send a Nordic from deck to grave for cost to manipulate its level equal. It changes it what you send. But you typically don't ever do that. You just normal it and link one with it. And then I play two Mimir. It has a standby phase effect where at the start of the standby phase you can uh, discard a spell to summon it. Mm -hmm. It could come up for link play, but I, I've literally never used that effect. You just care that it's a level 2 non-tuner. And then I play one copy of the Nordic Smith. He lets you add a Nordic Relic card from deck to hand on, on no more special. So you add, uh, I have a couple targets I add for that. And then I play one Alvis. He, uh, he, the only thing he does, you don't care about his uh, 
when it's used as link material effect. You care about his graveyard effect, where if your Aesir monster is sent to grave by opponent's battle card effect, mm -hmm. you can banish it from grave to cheese out another Aesir monster for free. That's so good. That's such a good effect to be able to combo with the deck. So, like, I usually make uh, Odin, and then mm -hmm. if they kill Odin by any way, and I have this in grave, I'll just banish it and summon Thor, and he's just a 35 beat stick. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize that it's still in the graveyard, and it just goes off. Oh, yeah, and then in phase, um, you know, you'll be able to banish this and draw a card for the Odin. And that's it for the Nordic monsters, and then I'm playing three Necroface. Oh, there it is. This is pretty much, uh, if you're familiar with a Shizu tier, this is a Kelbeck or a Gito, but instead of Mill Top 5, it's Banished Top 5. And then it, uh, when you normally, it, it mm -hmm. shuffles all banished cards into the deck, and it gains 100 attack for each shuffled into the main deck. Keyword, main deck. It does not count extra deck. So if you just have a bunch of banished stuff, it can get really huge, mm -hmm. and allows you, you know, if you're ever getting close to deck out, you can just normal this. I've seen that card get absolutely massive. It's really good when you banish this off Ragnarok, mm -hmm. and it hits another one, and it hits another one. You just banish 15, a quarter of their deck's just gone already. <laughs> Man. And then for hand traps, I'm playing three Ash. Mm -hmm. I prefer to play Bestials if I had it, because if you ever have a uh, Metaphys Engrave or Necroface mm -hmm. Engrave, you can banish it to trigger the Necroface or trigger a Metaphys next standby. But uh, I don't have Bestials, so I'm just playing Ash. But I would definitely cut this for two Magnumut and one uh, Druid Swarm if I had it. Yeah, because that would help you also banish some of your Metaphys cards. Oh, yeah. it's pretty Because they're all light, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm playing three D, -sh D Shifter because it's a banished deck, and uh, I heard this was a pretty good card. Oh, yeah. That's pretty much, like, and it takes out a lot of the meta decks right now, too. Oh, yeah. it's This deck takes a minute to get this gears going, so you just want to slow them down as much as you can. And that's it for the monsters. Spell cards, I'm playing three copies of Ace of Metaphys. It's pretty much uh, draw power for the deck. It's a soft once per turn banish a Metaphys card from deck, or from, not from deck, from hand, excuse me, to draw a card. And then it has a mandatory effect where depending on whose turn it is, it does something. On your own turn, it makes all the non-Metaphys monsters on the field lose 500 attack and defense. And on the opponent's turn, it changes all their battle positions. So it just gets really funky and people are getting really confused by it. So if you ever trigger it in battle phase off the uh, the decoy, you can switch them to defense mode so they can't attack you anymore. Or gets their attack really low so Ragnarok can walk into them and deck special and stuff like that. That's really handy too. Like, being able to basically end the battle phase by shifting them to defense. The only thing it doesn't work with is, like, Link Monsters. Yeah. if Most people don't ever read decoys, so when they attack, you say effective decoy, summon something. Effective asymmetrist to put them in defense mode. Stuff like that. And I'm playing the three newly at three dimensional fissure. Uh, a lot of decks right now that, have like the graveyard, have trouble mm -hmm. dealing with this card, and I don't care about it at all. So if I go first and, you know, set this up, I have a good chance of winning unless they pop it, but... It just depends. And then the last spell is Gold Sark, because uh, Banished Necroface, pretty much just Banished Necroface. And that is it for these spell cards. For traps, we're doing three Ascension. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much your rota for the deck. It has a onboard effect where you discard a Metaphys card, draw a card, and then you can banish a Metaphys card from deck. And if itself is banished, you can add a Metaphys card from deck to hand. But the effect is sharp hard once per turn, so you can't use both in the same turn. You have to pick which one you like to use. But typically, you're going to use the banish effect. So you could uh, send this off Daedalus to add for follow-up. And then I'm playing one copy of Dimension. I might bump this up to two. This card's pretty mm -hmm. good. It says when a, your opponent specials a monster, you get the special of Banished Metaphys. And then if a Metaphys monster in your possession is banished, you can target a card on the field to banish it. That's pretty good. So typically, what I like to do with it is set up the uh, Ragnarok and Banish Zone. So when they play in special, you'll summon Ragnarok, Ragnarok and Banish 3, and if you hit a Metaphys card, you'll get the Banish card. That's pretty good. Just be able to banish something off of that and then being so easy to be able to pull off, too, like that. Yeah. And then for the last two, for the 40, this is a 40 main deck, for the 39th card, I'm playing the Nordic Relic Selene. I'm, I'm sure I butchered that, but I, you know. That's Any, okay. Anyway, this is pretty much Dark Ruler, your entire opponent's board. All their face-up cards while you control an Aesir, and it's uh, it's hard once per turn, but, it, you know, just a Dark Ruler is pretty good. And then a second target, I'm testing. I'm not sure if I like it at the moment. I'm currently testing it. It's the Gungnir. It's a, this is pretty much what you add off of uh, the Smith if you know you're not going to get to the, the Savine. 
if it gets if you know you're kind of playing through a hand trap of some mm -hmm. sort basically what it does is you banish an ac or a nordic monster target a card on the field destroy it and then on the second end phase what you banish comes back so it's just spot removal. Yeah. And you use this against me. You use this against me in a duel, and that was really crazy because you basically just turned off all my monsters. Yeah. Dude, that, that card is broken. It turns off back row two and everything. Oh, yeah. Like, you just turned off my whole field. It's just like, if you know uh, the link one Nordic's going to get negated, this would be a nice backup to have. You can just banish it and pop a card. Oh, yeah. At least get something for your troubles. And then that's it for the main deck, 40 cards. The extra deck, I'm playing one Guvelg. Uh, I only play one because you, you banish three cards for it, mm -hmm. for, and uh, you're usually not going to resolve that more than once, so you just usually you're going to do the combo only once. But what she does is on summon, she banishes up to three cards from your hand or field, then you summon that many Nordic monsters from deck, but you cannot summon monsters except Aesir's or normal summon set for the rest of the turn. So what you do is you, know, you banish Necro Faces, Metaphys cards, summon your... You want to summon levels to equal 10 so you can make your Aesir monster. And then you can add your, summon the Smith, add either the Goomnir or the Savine. And that way your Metaphys or your Necrofaces will trigger next time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm playing IP, generic, just generic link material if you need to get something off board. Especially when decoys keep coming back, we'll have free mm -hmm. link material. And we can go into, you know, stuff like Phoenix or Unicorn, stuff like that. Yeah, popping spells and traps and spinning cards is good. Yeah. Especially with the IP going into Unicorn. Oh, yeah. And then I'm playing top a lot of Zero Boros since... Oh, yes. We banished a lot of cards, so this guy's going to get really big. And if they ever want to... We can always uh, trigger it ourselves by summoning the de decoy to a zone and just trigger it. Yeah, and doesn't it have the ability, too, that it like gains like 200 for every single one that gets banished or something? Yeah, every banished card gains 200. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It gets massive. And that's it for links. For Synchrogues... The one Metaphys Horus. Mm -hmm. So this card is like super good. So basically what it does is, depending on what you use to make it, it gets effects. So you're typically going to use the effect monster and the pendulum monster effect. And it can ch it change on itself, so you can pick the order of how you do it to like play around negation. So the effect monster is, it targets a face-up card on the field and negates its effects permanently. And the pendulum monster is, uh, you hand me one of your monsters, it does not target yeah, it just makes them give it to you. They they get to pick. Yeah, that's the only issue. They get to pick what they give you. Yeah, and like this Ragnarok plus Decoy just makes this really easy, and then put your Pendulum Monster and your Effect Monster into it. Yep, and uh, the monster you still cannot attack, but uh, you can just link it off or do whatever you want with it. Then I'm playing Odin. He's probably the best Aesir out of all three of them. He can make himself unaffected by back row on your, your main phase. Mm-hmm. And if he ever he's, if he's ever killed during end phase, he banish a Nordic Ascendant Tuner, mm -hmm. the Vandus, to summon it back, and it lets you draw a card. He's That's just, pretty good. He's just four thousand beat stick, and when it, the uh, Link One points to it, he can't be targeted, and the Link One itself cannot be attacked while it points to Odin. Then I'm playing Thor. I usually never make this. I always make Odin, but uh, the uh, the I can't remember his name. The Green is guy. it Alvis? Yeah, all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they kill Odin, somehow, you just summon this for free. That's typically why I'm playing it. He has the effect to uh, Dark Ruler, all face-up monsters, opponent controls. And then you're never going to use the graveyard effect because I don't play a Nordic Beast. He just comes back and does 800 burn damage. And then I'm playing Baron. It's a good pivot with your Metaphys Horus if mm -hmm. you have two Ragnarok on board because he's six and Ragnarok's a level four tuner, so you can go into Baron. It's just a generic negate, pretty good. Now, or alternatively, if you're trying to push for game, you can go into Ching Ying, because once again, just like Zero Boros, he will get huge, and you can trigger it to banish a card from Field of Grave. Mm -hmm. And also, he drops your opponent's monsters down by 100 oh, each. Oh, yeah. Ragnarok will have a field day with that. And then I play Sigma, because you can just make it with an 8 plus the 4 Ragnarok. It's just unaffected, idiot. And that's it for the Synchros. For Exceeds, I'm playing a... The number 97 package. Oh, uh, okay. For number 100 and the Titanic. Just to make it so that you can go in for a 9K or a spell negate. I got you. Yeah, pretty much. If uh, We just have two 8s on board. There's a lot of 8s in the deck. And then lastly, I play a Dweller because uh, Dweller. Oh, yeah. Shutting down Graveyard. Which you're already kind of sort of doing because of the um, because of D Shifter and your Dimensional Fisher. Yeah. And then side deck, just generic good stuff. Nibiru for combo decks. 
uh, the Ghost Sisters for Game 3 shenanigans. Everybody's got to have some sort of Game 3 win con. And then I'm siding Macro, the three. I usually take out shifters for these when I'm going, when I know I'm going to go first. It, this, like this plus DiFi is just so powerful. Oh, yeah. And having so many different ways to banish stuff is really good. And then Evenly's banish gimmick. And, uh, I, you know, if you've seen the last deck profiles, I hate back row. I hate back row. Because we always got to have the two Cosmic Feather Dust. Oh, yeah. To round it out that extra deck, or the side deck. That's pretty good, dude. I really like the deck. That's really nice that you built it that way, too. The Metaphys cards really flow well with the Nordic cards. I like that a lot. Yeah. But banish three and just get mm -hmm. like, Necroface triggers and standby phase next turn trigger is pretty good. Oh, yeah. And you get a 4,000 idiot with a Dark Ruler. <laughs> yeah. With the, I mean, the shield plus Odin is just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, guys, this is it. Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell in there so you can come part of the notification squad. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.